Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at an AP exam question that would be something that's very typical of what you might see as far as describing or comparing two distributions. So this is question number one from the 2015 AP exam. It is my expectation at this point that you have already tried the problem on your own. So let's take a look at the question. Two large corporations, A and B, hire many new college graduates as accountants at entry-level positions. In 2009, the starting salary for an entry-level accountant position was $36,000 a year at both corporations. At each corporation, data were collected from 30 employees who were hired in 2009 as entry-level accountants and were still employed at the corporation five years later. The yearly salaries of the 60 employees in 2014 are summarized in the box plots below. Part A. Write a few sentences comparing the distributions of the yearly salaries at the two corporations. Part B. Suppose both corporations offered you a job for $36,000 a year as an entry-level accountant. Part I. Based on the box plots, give one reason why you might choose to accept the job at Corporation A. Part II. Based on the box plots, give one reason why you might choose to accept the job at Corporation B. So what I'd like to do here is first to go through what a model response would look like, and then we're going to actually dive into the rubric so that you can see exactly how this question was graded on the AP exam. So let's start with the model response. For part A, it asks to compare two distributions, and we know very well that that means that we have to address four big ideas, the shape, the center, the spread, and the outliers, and then we also have to make sure that we take care of the context somewhere. So you can see here that I've stated that the shape cannot be determined. And this is because we are given box plots here. And with a box plot, you don't necessarily know where the individual data values are within each one of the intervals. And so we really can't say anything overall about the shape. For the center, looking at the box plots, we can identify the median as the value at the center of the box. And you can see that the median value is very similar for both Corporation A and Corporation B. Now also from the box plots, we can see the range as the maximum minus the minimum, and we can see the IQR as the length of the box. And in both cases, we can see that the range in the IQR for Corporation A is greater than for Corporation B. Clearly from the box plot, we can see that Corporation A has two outliers that are around 72,000 and 78,000, and B does not have any outliers. Now let's take a look at part B. In, in the first part of part B, they're uh, asking us why we might want to take a job at Corporation A. And what I noticed in the box plots was that the maximum value for A was much higher than the maximum value for Corporation B. So I had the potential to earn $78,000 per year rather than $60,000 per year. So I said Corporation A allows the potential to make a much higher salary. And that would be a good reason why I might choose Corporation A. In the second part of the question, we're supposed to think about why we might want to choose Corporation B. And what I noticed on the box plots was that some employees at Corporation A were still making the same $36,000 as when they were hired. Whereas at Corporation B, the minimum value has increased from $36,000. And so the advantage of Corporation B is that it seems to guarantee that you will get some sort of a raise from your starting salary. So now let's take a look at what the rubric uh, says for this particular question and what exactly was needed in order to get full credit. So there are two parts that need to be graded on this rubric. Uh, part one is, uh, is, is part A, and then the second part is part B. In part A, there are four components that must be satisfied in order to get full credit. The first component is to compare the center. Well, if we take a look at the model solution here, the center is addressed here. And we are saying that the medians are similar. Okay, so we have definitely compared the center there. Now for comparing the spread, we're saying the range in IQR for Corporation A is greater than Corporation B. So very important here that we are using a comparative word, like less than or greater than or similar to, rather than simply listing the range in the IQR for each one of those corporations. So we have compared the spread. Uh, we had to address the outliers for A, which we definitely did here when we said that there were two outliers for Corporation A. And then we had to establish the context of the problem. Well, if I go back to the solution, I can see right here I've talked about median yearly salaries, and that takes care of the context. And really, we only need to state that one time in our solution. So if you have all four of these components, 
this will be graded as E, which is essentially correct. If you had exactly three of these components, it would be graded as a P for partially correct. And if you had zero, one, or two of these components, it would be an I for incorrect. Now let's take a look at the rubric for part B. Once again, we have four components that are necessary for full credit on part B. The first component says that in part I, there has to be some sort of statistical measure which has been identified. And if we look back at the model solution here, we can see that the statistical measure that's been identified here is the maximum value. So we've taken care of that component. Now, the second part is to explain why that statistical measure uh, has some sort of meaning in this context. And the maximum value is telling me that I could make a higher salary at Corporation A than Corporation B. So we've fully explained why that statistical measure is important. For component three, we have to go to part II and once again look for a relevant statistical measure. In this case, the relevant statistical measure is the minimum value. And we saw that at Corporation A, the minimum value uh, was 36,000, the same as the starting salary. So that's our statistical measure. Now we have to explain why that's important. And we can see that Corporation B seems to be guaranteed a raise, uh, whereas Corporation A, you might not get a raise. So we've explained our statistical measure there. Now notice, this is a little bit different than uh, the rubric above here. You have to have all four components in order to get E essentially correct. You have to have two or three components to get a partially correct, and then zero or one would be an incorrect. Now let's turn this into an overall grade for this free response question, which is out of four points. So if you had essentially correct on both parts, you would get a four. If one part was essentially correct and the other part was partially correct, in either order, you would get a three. For a two would be an E and an I, or two partials. For a one is a partial and an incorrect, in either order. And of course, if you had two incorrect, you would get zero points. Thank <laughs> you.